Welcome everyone to episode 12 of Ultimate Gamer Podcast. I have with me Kevin. Hey everyone. And yeah, we're just going to get straight to the point and straight on the show here because we have a lot of interesting stuff to talk about, ranging from Nintendo Direct to Atari to THQ to Sony to even Nino Kuni, which we're going to start off with. So, uh, Kevin, explain to me what is going on with Nino Kuni. All right. Uh, so recently, Nino Kuni, uh, Wrath of the White Witch came out for the PS3, and before it came out there was announcement of a special edition called the wizards edition um which is which was going to include a whole bunch of awesome stuff in it well it seems that there's been some problems with the orders really apparently some people are not getting their orders or instead getting emails stating that uh that that they've been refunded interesting that their that their pre-orders have been canceled that they their money has been refunded and they've been given a twenty dollar coupon to the Namco store or whatever it is for their troubles. Huh. Yeah, it's it's and it's gotten even worse. Now a lot of fans have noticed that on eBay there's a sell an independent seller who's got over two hundred copies and are selling them for four hundred dollars each. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So let, anyway, let me just do a quick eBay search while you're talking. That that's gonna be bullshit. Nah, I, I could send it to you. Hold on a second, Nino Cooney. Five hundred dollars. You have one for from yeah, Canada. Yeah, yeah. All these there's all these independent retailers that like ordered them from Namco and they're selling them for like four hundred. But there are people who had pre-ordered the copies, are not getting them. That's bullshit. Yeah, it's. Yeah, can, course, you, can you send me the one that there's uh, over a bunch? Yeah, sure. Um, the thing is, it just ended, so. But yeah. Here, send me. It. I just want to see this quickly. Okay. Yeah, you're not gonna believe this. Let's see, Nino Cooney. This is from fucking Canada. He has sold two hundred and nine of these. So who the hell is this seller? Because the seller can go fuck himself. Exactly. Oh, they ranged up. Yeah. They went from uh, 200 bucks all the way up to 400 Yeah. <laughs> this is going all the way from December 12th. But the second, it, it's, it seems like from January 20th, it just started shooting up. That's bullshit. It is bullshit. So now they're saying there's some conspiracy theories or something here. Yeah, there's apparent. There's a conspiracy going on among uh, the buyers of the game that play the, Canada. Uh, what? Play Canada. Yeah, there's been this huge uh, conspiracy theory that that the distributor for the for North America has been giving them to over to play Canada. And that they've been that the whole thing has been fixed. That is bullshit. It's it is bullshit. No, you know what Namco should fucking do for this issue is they should remanufacture this and guarantee a copy to everybody. If anything, what they should do is give everyone a free voucher code for the digital edition of the game while they're trying to mail out brand new copies of this back to those customers. Fuck the twenty dollar coupon. Well, they've also they've re recently released a uh, statement about the whole thing, and it's just a whole bunch of, you know, legal jargon. Uh, you know how this is horrible. You know, all this kind of bullshit. No, it's a, none of this legal jargon. Look, Namco Bandai for the past few years has fucked over the customers constantly. You look at uh games like for the Vita, the um, what was it, the uh, Ridge Racer for Vita? Yeah. Oh, where what they give you a full game price, but give you only five cars and three tracks, and then decide, well, you know, we're gonna sell you additional cars and sell you additional tracks on top of the forty dollars you paid for the full game. It had less cars and tracks than the original Ridge Racer for the PS One had. Yeah, so. I'm not surprised that something like this would happen and have Namco Bandai's name on it. 
Yeah, Namco, for some reason, ever since Bandai bought Namco, they've been just going downhill. Of course. I blame Bandai for the whole thing because it's just like Namco was never like this. You know, Namco was always a cool company. They never really screwed over customers. And then Bandai bought them over. And then now they're just screwing customers like crazy. Oh, this is stupid. This is right, right. Look, we understand that $20 voucher um, has been offered to their fans, blah, blah, blah. It's unfortunate we're unable to produce additional Wizard Edition uh, units to fulfill all the extra orders. So what they're going to do is give the affected fans a 400-page hardbound copy of the Wrath of the Witch uh, strategy guide. Fuck the strategy guide. What? Fuck the strategy guide. You know what? The way I see it, I'd rather just import like the UK version. No, I think I think or something like I think that. Namco Bandai should be legally obligated to give the people what they ordered. Yeah. None of this bullshit. Explain, really, seriously, explain why Play Canada had hundreds of copies to sell. Explain that. You don't say, oh, well, we don't work with them. Bullshit. There's no other way you can cut this. How, th- there's absolutely no way that you can say with, you know, without a doubt that they're not related. It- it's impossible. They, Play Canada should be fucking sued for this shit. Because how else did they the get all is, those copies? Explain. Well, get, I don't even think GameStop got that many fucking copies. Apparently, they got their copies from a distributor called Digital River. Okay, Digital River should be fucking sued then. Yeah. They, there's some theories out there uh, right now, one of which is that uh, Digital River... Being based in Minnesota, not too far from Canada, conspired to work with Play Canada to sell the Wizard Edition at higher profit margins. All right, so what, what people should do is go to Play Canada's uh, eBay account and flag it for fraud. Because that's what it is. Fraud. Yep. Point blank. Fraud. When you go and you sell something to a customer, then you revoke the sale, then turn around and give it to somebody else to sell it at a higher price as fucking fraud. No matter how you cut it. That's fraud. You're frauding your customers. And you know what? Fuck this game. I was going to buy it, but no, fuck it. I, I'm i ashamed and appalled that Studio Ghibli is associated with this shit. Studio well, Ghibli, it's, no, it's, shouldn't, not, it's, it's not, not their fault. Studio, I know yeah, it's, it's not their fault. fault. It's not but Level saying, 5's fault. This is Namco's fault. <laughs> it's Digital River's fault. I understand that. Canada's but fault. what I'm saying is Studio Ghibli has their name attached to the shit out of association. Because it was Studio Ghibli who helped produce the game, unfortunately, they are tied to this shit. Even though they may have had nothing to do with this bullshit, because they worked with Namco Bandai, I really wish they didn't. You know, they're going to have to feel the wrath of it, if anything. You know, if if people are saying, okay, fuck this, you know, I'm not going to support this game. Now Studio Ghibli is losing out on money because of stupid Namco Bandai. Yeah. This is bullshit. It is bullshit. It's just... This is uh, retarded. They should... <sighs> it should be illegal. It really it should. Is because it? Wait, is it it's illegal? It's antitrust. Okay, yeah, it's illegal. It violates antitrust. Uh, Jesus damn. Jesus Christ. That is bullshit. And, the, and yeah. the fucking idiots that spent $400 on the copy. You guys are just equally to blame. You basically proved them okay with this. The moment you said, oh, I want this game so badly, I'm going to spend 400 bucks to buy it off of some asshole on eBay. You just gave them free money. Yep. Instead of just allowing them to sit on this entire stockpile, which is what happened with those Wii U uh, guys, you know, the ones that are like, oh, I'm going to sell a Wii U for a thousand bucks. Yeah, you bought maybe 30 or 40 pre orders, but now you get to sit on that pre order and not make a fucking dime. That's what how you hurt people like this. That's how you say, you know what, fine, I don't approve of that shit because you're flipping these things for four times the value. Fuck you. That, that is bullshit. Yeah. That is bullshit. And as I said, I was going... My PS3 has not been turned on since I've gotten my Wii U. This was going to be the first game I was going to buy for my PlayStation 3 since I've got 
the Wii U. And no, not going to bother with it. <laughs> this is... I don't blame you. I mean, it, it's bullshit. It's complete bullshit. It and it's illegal, and I think it is illegal. I think it is. something. There should be an investigation to this, because that's fucked up. Yeah. You basically promise customers a copy. They shelled out the money. They have the money. They don't get their product. They refund the money. And they go and say, oh, here, here's a $20 coupon. Fuck the coupon, man. It, you know how, as I said, the way that Banco, Namco Bandai, look, let's say you guys are innocent as can be. Let's say you had absolutely nothing to do with this. Let's just say, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Here's how you solve the problem. You remanufacture these games. You go and say, okay, I had, let's say, 50,000 pre-orders for this. I'm going to manufacture 50,000 more copies than I originally wanted to to make things right. On top of that, you refuse to give it to that distributor, the Digital River. You say to them, look, I'm not going to give you these copies. If anything, we're sending these out the old-fashioned way with FedEx. You're gonna, you, yeah. We're going to make sure our customers get this shit. And from now on, every new video game release, Digital River does not get a fucking copy to sell. That's how you handle the situation. That's really how you do it. You pu publicly say, look, we were unaware of this. Upon our investigation, we realized that some shady things happened. We are going to make things right. That's how you handle a situation. And if you don't do it that way, then you know what, Namco, Namco Bandai, I will blame you equally to this shit. Because you're not doing the right thing. There's sketchy shit going on. Everyone can see it clear as day. That eBay listing is bullshit. Play Canada, if anything, everyone should boycott them because they're equally as guilty. If anything, they're the root cause of this problem. Yeah. Uh, I don't care. Oh, yeah, here. Here's a very rare copy of a game. We're going to give you 250, uh, no, 250 copies. Yeah, yeah, shady shit, man. <laughs> There's no way you could cut it's this. It's gone to a point where you can't uh, – where the only people who buy cl uh, collector's editions are either people who actually want it or people who just – are buying it so they can just resell it. Okay, look. Before 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 Ridiculous. yeah, before you offend somebody here, I do that. For me, I as long that, as I've been what? alive. Like, what about people who really I understand. want it? I understand that. Yeah. But you don't see me turning around buying 50 fucking copies. Oh, I buy no. one. No, 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 no. <laughs> you're not cuz you're not like you're the the copies that you're holding on to, you're holding on to them for just like in a few years from now. Of course. I'm you not know, the guy that's going to buy 50 copies and immediately a, resell them and flip you're them. You're not a merchant. No. Like on eBay or Amazon. I'm a collector who sells his collection. Exactly. That's the way we look at yep. it. And that's what I'm saying is that, yes, I do buy so – at most, the most I've ever bought was two copies of the same game because I want to play with it. So I have one that remains sealed and one that I open so I can enjoy the game. I've done that with the Zelda Skyward Sword, which they no longer include that CD anymore, the music really? CD. Yep. Um, and I bought it for the Resident Evil Revelations. So I can have two copies that are misspelt. So one day, if they ever became uh, a collector's item, I would have a sealed copy to sell. Now, in regards to the Dead Space 3, they're packaging the game and the, and the uh, dev kit separately. So the dev kit can remain sealed, but the game I can still enjoy and play. Yeah. Nino Cooney, I was going to buy the Wizard Edition. Um, I was going to uh, open it up, similar to how I did with Catherine. You know, the Catherine game, I bought only yeah. one copy. I intended on opening it and enjoying it. Nino Cooney was going to be one of those games. I was going to get that, give that little, like, stuffed animal to my dog so he could rip it up. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I know. Um, but, yeah, this is, I mean, if anything, this makes me glad that I didn't pre-order because then I would have been personally involved in this shit. Um, and I mean, last episode, uh, last week's episode, you were pissed off that they ran out of stock. Yeah. I really wanted to pre-order it, but you know what? <coughs> now thinking about it, I am too. Ha I, I am also happy that I didn't pre-order it cause I'm not into this, sh you know, involved with this shit. I know. But at I, the same time, I feel bad for the people who pre-ordered it, yeah, the I, people I, who, who wanted this and it's just, it's it, bullshit. And as I said, the way you handle this as a customer is you send emails, call their customer relations for their sales. 
you make sure you give them your word. You know, say, look, I'm pissed off. You created a contract of sale and then you fucked me over. That's basically what you have to say to them. Say, look, I want you have to make things right. You guys have to give me what I ordered. And, and they can play the whole game. They can say, well, we're not legally obligated. We reserve the right to cancel a sale anytime. Yeah, you can keep telling, you can tell that to somebody who gives a shit. But me as a customer, what will make me happy is if you make things right. Tell them that legal matter doesn't mean shit to me. Yeah. You tell them, look, if you want my support for all your next upcoming games, you have to make this right. You know, that, that is bullshit. I, 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 <laughs> this is the yeah, first. I, I don't I think there's it's... ever been something this fucked up before. Yeah. It, it's just... It's unbelievably fucked up. It is. You would never expect something like this to happen, but there it is. <laughs> it happened. Now, we're going to transition. Uh, now, last week I spoke of Cryomore. Yeah. Um, now, the intro music that you heard, yet again, is by Avi Tran. Um, the title of this particular track that I uh, played was uh, the the basically the theme song for the game. Very well done, as well as last week's uh, intro music. They yeah. started the Kickstarter, which in the show notes below on YouTube, uh, there'll be a link to the Kickstarter, as well as the uh, their uh, Tumblr account. There, they have as of right now, and I'm going to refresh my page because this shit keeps growing and growing. They've hit twenty one thousand dollars of their sixty thousand dollar goal in less than twenty four hours. Fuck! They have four hundred ninety two backers, and I am one of them. Now that was fast. <laughs> yes, because last time I checked, it was like what nineteen. Before we start yeah. started the show, it was nineteen. So since the point that I started the show and up till now, it has gained two thousand dollars. Isn't that insane? Wow. Now that... now they have multiple like rewards that you can get. And uh, I highly suggest you guys check this out. Like, again, there'll be a link to this. Give them, you know, uh, I would highly, highly suggest you guys uh you know, support them on this. Now, this is the very first Kickstarter I've ever contributed to. I contributed to the two hundred and fifty dollars. This is for the Master Cryless Pledge. You get all previous rewards, which includes um, a hardcover art book, a physical copy of the game's soundtrack, a map, world map poster, a and a digital download of the game, and high resolution wallpapers. As well as both limited Kickstarter exclusive nine inch resin cast figurines of Esme and Bliss. I cool. think it was definitely a good one. I mean, for me, I I, I am supporting this game now. Kevin here uh, posed a very interesting question. He asked me, "Well, where the hell did you hear of Crymore in the first place?" Yeah, <laughs> you know, because it is it's it's seriously, you know, it's a, Kevin knows me. I'm not into the whole indie thing. I'm not. No, you're, you're, I've tried to get you into indie games, and you just keep, like, you're, you know, <laughs> um, every time I try, you don't really play them. Yeah, so the funny thing is, for him, it's it's more of, how the fuck did you, uh, you know... It's the... also weird hearing you actually uh, contribute to a Kickstarter. Exactly. Because... I, I mean, you've contributed to a few, right? Yeah, um, no, only one. Uh, that was the uh, Double Fine Adventure. I did not contribute to that, obviously. I contributed $100 to that. Huh. And I actually have uh, put away, I'm not going to get it out right now, but I actually have the T-shirt and the poster that they gave out to those who pledged. Cool. Yeah, there's right now, they're making a documentary on the making of the game, and that's going to be sent to the to the uh, people, to, to those who pledged, probably within a few months. Huh. So, which I can't believe it's been gonna be a year since that since since the double fine Kickstarter. Yeah. And that, and I heard it, that one was very, very successful. This one, I mean, is that just was, blowing my that mind. That was probably the first like time, uh, probably the, the, the first big video game Kickstarter. Because if you notice after that, 
all of a sudden there were a lot of indie developers that were, were that were starting Kickstarters. Huh. I mean, there was uh, I mean, there were several, there were several uh, game designers who had worked on games in like the eighties and nineties who had made come uh, were making comebacks and starting Kickstarters. Oh, of course, to, to jumpstart franchises that they worked on, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Huh. I mean, there was, uh, one of them was the original team that was behind the, uh, Leisure Suit Larry games. Okay. The original Le- Leisure Suit Larry, not like the, the shitty ones that came out the, over the past, like, 10 years. Um, they started a Kickstarter to make a remake of the first one. So. Cool. But and now, there's another one where it's the team that was behind Carmageddon. They were going to, they started a Kickstarter to do a new Carmageddon game. Huh. Remember that? Yes. Carmageddon? That was, that was, wow, that was extremely controversial when it came out. Now, the people who are behind this game are, uh, are known for working on Skullgirls, as well as working for Tales of Innocence, um... You know, people who have backgrounds with um, and Scott and Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim the yep. game. <laughs> I was about to say that. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, as I was saying, like the work they've already shown off on this, it's a very well thought out game. Um, as I said, highly recommend people to back this. It's uh, I, I'm I'm blown away how quickly this thing is uh, being funded. Yeah, um, I mean, so I'll I even... might do it. Um, I have to. I have to consider fi- uh, finances, but maybe I'll do it. You know, you want to contribute the fifteen hundred bucks. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that, that game looks actually very interesting. Yeah. You know, it looks like a mixture of like Legend of Zelda and Chrono. No, I wouldn't say Chrono Trigger, but something like Legend of Zelda: Secret of Mana and stuff like that. Oh, so. we never answered the question. How I what? how I discovered it. Yeah, you never did now, that. I've been subscribed to Waltz for Luma for a very long time. I love her music. I love her re-renditions of songs uh, ranging from Zelda, Chrono Trigger. Um, you know, she does a very, very good job. Her, one of her like earlier songs I really liked was um, doing a redo of uh, Planet Wisp theme from uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, wait, she did that? Yeah, she did. Oh, no, no, she didn't do that song. She did a remake of it. No, I know she didn't do that, but I know the version you're talking about because yeah. you showed it to me. Yes. Ah. Oh. Yes, and that's what I'm saying. Is that that's why I like her music because she's really, really good. And she started really doing, like, in the past year or so, she started doing her own, like, composing um, and excellent stuff. Uh, and so far, there hasn't been a single track that I don't like for uh, uh, Cry More that she's done. So uh, what happened was I, I'm subscribed to her channel and all of a sudden I start seeing these things. I'm like, what the fuck is crying more? And, uh, you know, listening to the music, I'm like, wow, this is excellent. And sure enough, she had a link to the Tumblr and that's when I started really looking into it. And it's definitely a very well like thought out idea for a game. And yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's something that I'm really looking forward to. So we wish them all the luck. Um, highly suggest all of my subscribers as well as those who, those who listen to the show to contribute if you can. Uh, definitely check it out and, you know, spread the word. Um, yeah. So now we are going to start moving on to other topics. We're going to talk about... I'm going to let you front end the uh, uh, on that email. Do you have the email up? Fuck, fuck. Sorry. That's fine. Uh, yes, I have the email. Okay. Number three and number four, you're going to do all by yourself. Oh. Okay. okay. You're going to pull That's the good. reins. <laughs> all, right, all right. So you can start. So which oh, which, which one we talk? Uh, you could do uh, number three and number four in the list. Now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. First off, uh, there's been several bankruptcies that have been going on for the past few months. Uh the most well-known being of THQ. John? Yeah, I'm listening. As I said, okay. you're running the whole deal. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, THQ, you know, last month they officially went bankrupt, and their IPs and such have been going on sale. Well, the sale is officially over, and it seems that, well, several game companies have gotten their hands on uh, several franchises, I'm trying to find the 
thing about that shit. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. Don't sweat. Well, you know, I mean... Unprepared. You're going to get a slap on the wrist. I know. <laughs> Shut up. Crap. I can't find it because there was a list of like di what go companies got. I know Ubisoft got something. Sega got something. Um, yeah. But all I can tell you is the good news out of all this is that EA got nothing. Great. That's good. So EA Activision got nothing out of this. Good. So there's good news coming out of that. So you won't see your favorite uh, franchises getting raped. Exactly. <laughs> there's, but there is a bit of bad news. Uh, nobody has picked up uh, Vigil Games, who is responsible for Darksiders. Oh. That's the only problem. No one's picked it up yet. So It could be that they want too much money for it. It's weird. Nobody really uh, offered any money for it. Really? Yeah. Well, some people don't like the game. Yeah, okay. Here it is. Uh, Big Huge Games was uh, sold to 38 studios. Value Soft was sold to Cosme. Relic Entertainment was sold to Sega. Volition, which was... I think Volition did uh, Red Faction. Okay. No, Saints Row. You know, yeah, Red Faction and Saints Row. Okay. Um, they've been sold to Koch Media. And THQ Studio Montreal has been sold to Ubisoft. Interesting. So, yeah. Uh, but like I said, the good news out of all of this is that no one has... Uh, that. EA and Activision has bought none of them. So they've all found good homes. Yeah. Let's but hope they I'm have found good homes. I'm still kind of sad about Vigil because uh, I recently started playing Dark, the first Darksiders, and I'm actually really liking it. Huh. It's kind of a mixture of God of War and Legend of Zelda. It's the best way I could describe it. Yeah, maybe you'll have that, to maybe you'll have to show me the game someday. Yeah, it has that gameplay of of God of War, but like it the the but the the mission system and all that kind of stuff is very much like Legend of Zelda. All right, and cool. I actually kind of I'm liking it. I'm really looking forward to getting the sequel, uh, Dark Siders Two. So, all right. Well, speaking of Zelda, we're gonna start on topic number one for you. Well, there was also. <laughs> Um, there was also the second bankruptcy. Oh, you only did one? Yeah, I didn't talk about the other one. I thought you talked about both as a whole. No. Okay, go ahead. The other one is, of course, Atari. Uh, yeah, Atari has officially filed bankruptcy, and they said the reason why they're doing so is to uh, break away from uh, its uh, parent company in France called Atari SA. Uh which was formerly known as Infogrames. Infogrames. God, you always do this. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's the way it's spelled. Anyway, everything is being uh, sold, including game franchises and the logo. Okay. So everything from of Atari of North America is for sale. Eh. Let's yeah. see if Chuck E. Cheese will buy it. <laughs> though what i do find interesting is the fact that one of the people who's on the board of directors is uh is nolan bushnell huh that's interesting who is the former uh founder and co-owner of atari and pothead well somewhat um the thing is with the you know about nolan bushnell is that for he has always regretted uh, leaving Atari because when he when Atari was bought by Time Warner, I think Time Warner Communications in the late seventies, like seventy seven, seventy eight. Uh huh. He was forced to sign a a a uh, oh shit, what's the name of it? Um, An NDA? Not NDA. Uh, non competitive. A disagreement as I agreement meaning he couldn't he couldn't go to another game company or make any games after that that's retarded once he, yeah 
So there was a fight. He had a fight with people in the company, and he left. And he regretted. Not only did he regret leaving the company, but he also regretted ever signing that thing. And for years, he's been he's been wanting to get back into the video game industry and to get back Atari. Well, so maybe he'll rebuild Atari from the ground up. I have a feeling that he's selling everything so that he can personally buy everything. So that way he can run it his way. Exactly. That's and good. I, I think it'd be much better that he runs everything because, I mean... Because yeah, Atari it, has fucked up big time oh, yeah. in the past few years. And really, that's because... And that can be all be blamed on Time Warner Communications. Okay? Time, they bought the company... They milked it for everything it got, and when they couldn't make a buck off of it, they got rid of it. It's like you and hookers. <laughs> Why me and hookers? Well, you're Why such a, you? like, fucked up person, man. You know, you just milk them for whatever they got, and then you oh toss them God. to the side and find another hooker. Oh, my God. Oh just boy. saying as it is, you know, I mean, it's okay. It's your style. Not mine, but your style. You know? Who's that hey, new girl that, that you're he... about to toss to the side? So, yeah, that is Atari and THQ. It's a shame that both of them are going. Well, THQ, I think, is officially going. But Atari, I'm not so sure. So, keep an, I would say keep an eye out on Atari, but THQ, I think, is pretty much gone. Pretty much in the shitter. Yeah. And it's kind of, they've been around since, they've actually been around as, uh, they're actually as old as we are. Huh. They've been around since 1989, so, yeah shame yes it is but anyway moving on finally yeah you're done shut up you you did order four then three uh, that's why i thought you were done it was like three and then four i'm like oh okay he's talking about thq okay that's done now it's transition to one Does it, matter? I mean... <laughs> it did because it threw me off i thought you had i thought you had merged the two together but whatever it's fine okay. um let's see number one nintendo direct which yeah okay let me first say i'm a little mixed on it okay first they made a lot of announcements but okay it's one thing to make an announcement and it's a whole nother to show off video and gameplay they only showed off gameplay of like three games that's it the rest you know the ones that you really are looking forward to they just showed like a screenshot of an old game and then said yeah a new 3d mario action title is coming well, no, 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 don't fucking make an announcement unless you have something to show. Well, that's the thing. They said that this stuff will be shown at E3. Yes, but it's kind of like a strip tease. It's like, oh, yeah, you still have five months to wait or four months to wait. You know, here, we're going to just, like, give you a little bit of the tea, and then we're going to take that thing away. And that's what they did. But things they showed off, they, were gonna, they talked about system updates, so they admitted that people are unhappy with the slowness of the OS. Something that I have definitely said in the past, and Kevin, you can vouch for me that it yeah. sucks. It shouldn't take that long to do things, and they said they're going to improve the speed. Um, you know, uh, the other thing they'll be doing is new Zeldas. One is going to be a remake, or uh, you know, re you know, remaking the Wind Waker. Uh, what was the official title they call it? The Wind Waker something. Wind Waker Reborn. Yeah, Reborn. Okay. Anyway, they yeah, they said that there's going to be a brand new Zelda coming out for the Wii U. It's in development, but they said in order to tide everyone over until that comes out cuz they said it's going to take some a long time. They're going to come out with a completely re a complete remake of Wind Waker in HD. Now, there's a big difference between this and that bullshit that Sony pulls. Yeah. What you're going to see from Nintendo with the the Wind Waker Reborn from is what a real shot. remake of a game. It's where yeah. you're not just bumping up the re resolution and the textures. You are recoding the game from scratch. You are br creating brand new assets, brand new, uh, you know, textures, brand new everything. That's how you do an HD remake. Unlike exactly. this bullshit that Sony well, does. That's what Nintendo does when they do a remake of something. They don't just use existing textures or pixels. They do it completely from uh, from the ground up. I really, mean, they at, do. Yeah, look at Super Mario All Stars. Yeah, that's where they did. It. No, Super yeah. Mario All Stars, and that's what I was gonna say. 
the Wii edition was bullshit. Well, not the. I'm talking. They about They literally the just took the ROM from the SNES cart and threw but it on a disc. I meant the Super Nintendo version. Okay, so it's okay they do it once but not twice. Shut up. I I really do think Nintendo took the easy way out with that. I know, I know, but anyway, I can't excuse them for it. Will you shut up and let me speak? Okay, go ahead. Okay, sorry, I just it gets it's frustrating for me. Sexual if frustrations, look, Kevin. If you look at Super Mar uh, Super Mario All Stars, okay, you know they didn't just you they didn't just take the uh, the ROMs of all the games on the NES and just put on a Super Nintendo cart. They completely remade them, brand new pixels, brand new pixels, yeah. Brand new music. The music was completely redone. Everything. And then you look at something like uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D or Star Fox 64 3D, which completely remade the games. Yes. You know, brand new tech. It wasn't just like, exactly like you said. They didn't just like bump up the resolution and update the textures. It was a complete remake. It's like Remember Resident the Evil for the GameCube. Exactly. Exactly. Um,. So yeah, when when Nintendo remakes something of one of their older games, they don't just uh, crap out on it. They don't just, uh, you know, just take original game code and just you know re bump up everything up. They completely remake it from the ground up, and you can definitely see that in these screenshots. And I wish, I really wish, they would have picked a different Zelda game to remake. I, I personally, look, I mean, I know a lot of people like The Wind Waker. I personally don't like the way the game plays. I'm not I even talking it. about the graphics. I'm not even talking about, oh, you know, I didn't like the cell shading. I don't mind shell, uh, cell shading. That doesn't bother me. What bothered me is I hate the fucking surfing the globe on a fucking ship. Well, maybe this will give them a chance to actually fix that problem. Because it was boring as shit the first half of the game before you and get the warp another... ability. It was yeah. boring as shit going from one side of the map all the way to the other. You're just doing it for a half hour, just and sailing. That's, another... that's one thing I've noticed about Nintendo's remakes is that when they remake a game, they fix problems that were in the previous game. Hopefully. Like, if you look at Ocarina of Time 3D, they completely fixed the Water Temple. Uh, yeah, they did. I mean, they they, they made it easier allowed, by color coding it. I mean, yeah, they color coded things. They they color they allowed because of the touch screen, you were able to just easily slip uh slip. Sorry. No, it wasn't slip. about the it wasn't about the touch screen. Uh, what they did was no, it, they made it, they it, made the boots a C item instead of it being a, an equip. You're like uh, it's basically that's what I was saying. Yeah, but they did that in the Wind Waker. In yeah. the Wind Waker, the iron boots were something you could put on your uh, on your Z, X, or Y button. So yeah. you, you could t take them on and off with just the push of a button. Whereas Ocarina of Time, you know, it was really stupid <laughs> how many times you'd have to do that. But yeah, yeah. That, that's an example of them fixing something. And that's something I want to see with the Wind Waker. Give us the warp ability in the beginning. Or, or even better... Remove the distance. Just trim a little bit or, of the know, distance. Do what, um, you know, that actually would be a good idea. Give you the just warp ability the early or? Just trimming the distance or making the wind make you go faster. You know. That or. Or well, now that, that's another question. Are they going to fix the fucking baton? Because I hated that. Really? I, I hated the, what do you call it? The, uh. Was that called the one? What the fuck? Yeah, the Wind Waker yeah, wand. Wind Waker. Right. I hated it because for part of the problem was you had to do it in in. Uh, it was basically like if you're a conductor, you had to do it in time. You had to do it in time. What sucked was when you had to do the six, the six piece one. It was yeah. so fast. It was rapid. And the problem Maybe is, they'll fix that in this. I'm not. Really I want sure, them to but... just switch it where you just tap it in the direction you want, kind of like you play the ocarina. Yeah. Do it that way. Maybe. I mean, like I said before, Nintendo is. You know, when they remake a game, they fix problems that were in the original. Yeah, I so would. I personally that. would I mean, uh, consider that a problem. Hopefully, hopefully, this will also be a director's cut because, from what I've heard, there were two dungeons that were cut out. Yeah, the hopefully they game. add it. I mean, and they were and they were replaced with the uh, the Triforce. 
search uh, parts. Remember that? Yeah, the stupid you had to go underwater and grab shit. Yeah, they were they replaced that. Uh, they were originally supposed to be two more dungeons, and then they took them out because of time constraints. Now, don't get me wrong. The dungeons design was actually top notch in the Wind Waker. I actually enjoyed yeah. like one of my favorite ones was with that bird, the one you had to throw her and stuff. Remember that? Oh yeah, yeah. I like that one. I also like the one where you had that stick where you would throw, or maybe I'm confusing that with a different Zelda game. The one where you had this like rod that you would uh, you would swing and and the little ball of light would go into a statue and you could control the statue. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. Was was that in Wind Waker? Or was that a, a Twilight Princess? I think that was in both. Uh, I'm confused as shit, but because I, I remember there was something with with moving statue, like animating statues in Wind Waker. Yeah, so I might be confused, but I believe that was that was it. Yeah, I think it was in both of them. Um, but yeah, Wind Waker HD looks just amazing. It does. I mean, I'm definitely gonna pick it up. Um, but let's see how many years it takes for the new Zelda. I mean, they did say they would show off video or whatever at E3. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm concerned with which direction they're going to go. Now, is this going to be a repeat of the Space World 2000 where they show off a awesome-looking Zelda game but then they came out with Wind Waker? Or are they going to you know, give us that demo? You remember that demo they showed off with the Wii U? Yeah. I would love to see that as a full-fledged Zelda game because yeah. it, it really shows off what HD can do to a, a game like Zelda. I don't know. I mean, from what we've, uh, from what I've heard, uh, they said that they want to go back. Uh, the the way in which uh, the new Zelda work is going to work, they said they want to go back to something like the original Legend of Zelda and A Link to the Past. Well, that, that we're not talking about graphics at that point. You're such. you're talking about like level design and stuff like that. So, what do you think it's going to be a top down game? I don't think so. I mean, I hey, look, it can be done. I mean, you have 2.5D side-scrolling Mario games. I could clearly see a top-down Zelda game being done in today's world. Maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah. So we'll definitely see that. Um, so, I mean, we're looking forward to Zelda. We'll have to talk about it when E3 comes by. But, um, I mean... I'm going to be a little, like, uh, strict on it. I mean, yeah. I, I definitely think Wind Waker was an okay game. It's not my favorite in the series. I, it's one of my favorites. I loved Wind Waker, especially the music. The music oh, no, in that no, game As I said, music's great. I'm talking entirely about the gameplay. I, I know. Hate, I, the biggest pet peeve is the whole ship. That I thing understand annoyed the, the shit I out of me. I understand your grievances. Uh-huh. I understand your grievances, but even with all the those, I still think it's really damn good. It's okay. It's a good game. Would I, you would you okay. say it's the best in the entire Zelda series? No. Um, I think it's between Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess. I thought was it's up there, but it's not. I mean, the biggest problem with uh, you know Twilight Princess was the whole you know Twilight Realm and stuff like that. I mean. Yeah, the whole Wolf Link kind of took away from what, what I made say. Zelda. If you're it, uh, the best Zelda game, it's either between A Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time, and Majora's maybe Mask. Link, Majora's Mask, or maybe even Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening was good. I loved Link's Awakening, so I liked Majora's Mask more than Ocarina of Time. And, yeah, and that's, time was, is that Majora's Mask was just wow. It, it, Majora's Mask is one of those hidden masterpieces that, unfortunately, it it's like um, you know Invader Zim. It yeah. has its fans, and those fans are diehard fans of that game. It has a cult following. It has a cult following, and Majora's Mask was one of those games where I actually owned. I actually beat Majora's Mask before I beat Ocarina of Time. Now that really? yes. Um, and Majora's Mask, what I really loved is it, it just, it was such a darker approach to Zelda, but it was done very well. Um, and it was just, it was more of a moving piece. You know, you, you change people's lives in the game and it was just, it was a storytelling beyond anything they've done before. Yeah. And it's a shame that, that no game since has ever tried using 
something like it. I mean, especially from Nintendo. I mean, it showed. Yeah, I mean the the fact that you you only have three days until the end of the world, with this giant looming moon with like the most creepiest face in the world. Oh yeah, I remember people hating the whole three day thing. I didn't mind it. No, because because, mainly because there were ways in which because mainly because you could you could go back. You know, Not only that, like... you could slow down the time, so it didn't take that long. Um, you you know, you had a lot of shit to do. I mean, the biggest complaint people have with it, and it's a valid one, there's only really four temples. Yeah, it's... You know, I mean, that's a Compare very valid how... complaint, yeah. but to get to each temple, such a big thing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just to get to, like, the water temple, you have to co- complete so many side missions to do so that it really makes up for the fact that there are only four temples. Heck, I mean, the pirate's a layer can be considered a, dun- a, a level in, in and of itself. I mean, it's a mini dungeon. Yeah. But, but in order to get to the to that, you know, I mean, you had to collect the eggs. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Like, the, I'm saying there's just so much to it. But, you know... Hi, right, but before we get sidetracked, because I mean, we could talk about Zelda forever. <laughs> um, um, Mario Kart Wii. Well, I was U. gonna say that there was also some updates to the Miiverse as well. I were... honestly skipped them because I thought it was boring. Well, I mean, on the Miiverse, there's now accounts are verified, much like in Twitter. Um, what do you mean accounts and... verified? Yeah, I don't. I, I don't understand that. It's for like those for game designers and studios, and yeah. Oh, so it's just to say that this guy is who he says he is? Yeah, like, so if you go on Miiverse, you go up Shigeru Miyamoto. Okay. There's probably like 1,800 of them. Shigeru Miyamoto, and it has a green check right next to it. That's Shigeru Miyamoto's me. Okay. Okay. That's what they mean by that. Um, They also showed off uh, Pikmin 3, the fact that you can take pictures directly in-game and do close-ups and all this kind of stuff. That was creepy. You saw that? I saw that? Yeah. That was creepy. You're underground, and you have this, like, the, one of the Bulba things. Bulba, yeah, and it's whatever. like these, these purple, glowing purple eyes, and it's just yeah, like... Yeah, it just gets closer and closer to you. And I was like, holy shit. Like, I'm looking forward to that game. I'm really yeah. looking forward to uh, uh, Pikmin 3. They've also announced updates to the uh, Virtual Console. Oh, yeah, that is bullshit. Okay. No, um, no, I'm serious. Let's talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Look, well, this is how fucked up it is. Basically, what it is is if you owned any virtual con- console games on the Wii and you wanted to buy them on the Wii U, well, there's good and bad news. The bad news is that you're going to have to pay for them. The good news is that you're going to be paying for them at a reduced price. That's not good news. Look at it this way, right? They said that the prices for the the Wii U Virtual Console is going to be the same price as the Wii Virtual Console. So here's basically how I will translate that into my head. You're paying more to be an early customer. Basically, if I bought Super Metroid and I want to play it on the Wii U Virtual Console, I have to pay more than a person who didn't buy it for the Wii and just bought it out right there. I pay more. Wait, I'm, what? Okay, if you understood what happened, right? They said, okay, let's say Super Metroid. You and I both have Super Metroid on our Wii U's, but you have to go into the Wii to access it, okay? Yeah. If you want the Wii U version of it, which allows you to play it on your tablet and everything, you have to pay an additional dollar fifty, on top of the fact that you were already paid for this game in the past. Now, what they had said was... That if the the pricing for the Wii U Virtual Console games is the same price as the Wii Virtual Console, so let's say Super Metroid was um, was eight dollars on the Wii, it's eight dollars on the Wii U. I paid eight dollars, let's say three or four years ago, to buy Super Metroid. I now have to pay an additional dollar fifty, so that's nine dollars and fifty cents to for me to have. The Wii U version of it. Whereas a person who never owned the game in the past, who never paid the $8 in the past, gets it for $8. You know, what I'm saying is, yeah, I think yeah, it's I, bullshit. I get what saying, but you know what? At least it's not, at least they're not being a dick about it. They at are. Least, no, at least they're not like Sony 
like, you know, you would have, like, the, at least they're not, like, you know, saying, oh, you have to pay $8 if you already owned oh, you're it. You're talking the about the how, how you would transfer the PSP games to the Vita. Exactly. They did. They fucked over the the uh, the people who bought it uh, on the on the PSP for the Japanese market. Sony gave a pro- they made a program that okay it would be a reduced price. They never uh, introduced that into America. So, so if anything, they, Sony well, is I, even worse than Nintendo. You're not paying the full price. Yes, but I, I still. My issue is that I see, what you're get, I see where you're getting at, but at the same time, I think it's you know. Well, you think the, it's a justified yeah, cost? What? I, look, I, I'm what not I, saying it's justified cost. I'm just saying. Okay, at least, look at it this way, right? At least they're not. You, char- did you do the Wii U transfer? Eight, eight did you do the Wii transfer? Yeah. Okay. When you turn on your Wii, do you have any of your virtual console games on there anymore? No. Exactly. So it, that's what I'm trying to say is that I could understand if they said, okay, you'll have basically two copies of the game. You'll have the Wii version, and be, if you verified it on your account, you still have the Wii uh, version of it on the Wii, and you can, okay, for $1.50, you can have a copy on your Wii U. So you give your original Wii to your family member or whatever. They have Super Metroid, and you do too. But that's not the case. It, it, I think it's such a bullshit like thing because it's it's tied to your console you can't transfer this to another console so in all you're getting out of that additional dollar 50 is that you don't have to sign into the Wii uh the Wii console version and you get to use your tablet controller that's all you're getting for a dollar 50 now i know they said enhanced but enhanced in what respects it's still going to be the same resolution they're not going to magically make they Super Metroid a high definition enhance- edition they, for. They're not $1. talking $1. graphical enhancements. They're talking like what the, enhancements? The, the ability to play it on your gamepad with the TV off. That's you know, oh, that's worth a dollar fifty to me. Oh my god! The I mean, ability to uh, to save progress to to um. You could still do that on the Wii version. Yeah. So what are you getting out of that dollar fifty? Look, okay, I'm just saying that it's at least they're not making you char they're not charging you an extra but... five or eight bucks <sighs> just to play it on. At least they're not you know, at least they're not But you're giving them excuses. Oh god. I think it's wrong that they're charging a dollar fifty. I I think that's bullshit. Because as I'm saying, it's cheaper for the person who never bought the game in the first place. But here's the also an interesting thing. But there's also going to be the virtual console trials. What? You didn't you hear about this? No. Oh no, you mean the stupid thing that's for thirty cents? Yeah, that's not but a trial. What? That's not a trial version. No, that's what they're calling it, though. The trials, meaning it's leading up to the uh, to the uh, eventual release of the virtual console. And what it is is that once a month there will be a new game. Uh, on the virtual console, that will be thirty cents. Which Super Metroid is on that list now. Exactly. Here, here's the question, right? The guy said later on in the in the in the the uh, Nintendo Direct, he said something about if you already own it or something like that, you'll get a reduced price. So, it, am I going to be paying thirty cents or am I going to be paying a dollar fifty? Hopefully, thirty cents. I don't mind thirty cents. Yeah. Okay, that that's well, fine. Month, well, my I mean, problem, I have F zero. My problem the, the is that next month is the guy who didn't right. buy the game prior is getting a better price. That's my problem. You know, I'm not I'm not saying like you know the reason why I'm saying okay, thirty cents is okay with me is because that game is being offered to everybody for thirty cents. What I'm trying to say is for the guy who bought the game prior is paying more than the person who is buying it for the first time. That's what I'm I'm pissed off about. You know, it's not like oh okay, the the newer editions are cheaper or more expensive or anything. So okay, you bought it when it was seven dollars and now it's eight dollars. So you know we're gonna sell it to you for a dollar more or something like that. So you're paying the difference. No, the person who didn't buy the game prior is paying a a, a cheaper price. That's wrong. 
you know, so that's what I'm saying. So for those who are saying that I'm a Nintendo fanboy, clearly I'm not a Nintendo fanboy when I point out that this is wrong. I refuse. I will not upgrade any of my virtual console titles unless they make it free. Because I'm being screwed. As I said, you know, I mean... Okay, I get it. Okay, good. As long as you understand where I'm coming from. I understand where you're coming from, okay? Okay. Now we can move on to Mario Kart Wii U. But actually, well, I wanted to talk a bit about the trials, which, you know, it's once a month, and they're running it from January to July. Uh, The following games are Balloon Fight, which you can get right now, F-Zero in February, March is getting Punch-Out featuring Mr. Dream, April's getting Kirby's Adventure, May's getting Super Metroid, June is Yoshi, and July's Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong, which one? The original. Oh. Yeah. So. If it said Donkey Kong Country, it would have said Donkey Kong Country. Okay. Okay. Anyway, moving on to New Mario Kart. Mario Kart Wii U. They didn't show off anything. All they did was show off box art of the old games. Next, new 3D Mario game. They only showed off the previous box arts of old it's games. Because they said that the original team behind Mario Galaxy 1, 2, and 3D Land are working on the new one. Okay, but it really doesn't give us an idea of what they're going to go for. Um, I think if they're using the teams of Mario Galaxy 1, 2, and 3, uh, 3D Land, I think that pretty much gives you the hint that there's going to be a 3D world, 3D open world Mario game. No, I'm not talking about that. Uh, I'm talking about the theme. Is well, it going to be? A, gonna, is it going to be well, Galaxy Three, or is it going to be an, uh, you know, a completely different world-like game? Well, they're going to announce it at E3. That's what I'm saying. It, it just, it, 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 it's more of a, a such a tease. It's like, yeah, we can assume this God, anyway. They didn't need to tell hype. us. It's called hype. The whole point is to get you excited. I'm not e- excited. I'm annoyed. <laughs> it's doing You're the opposite. At everything. Well, uh, hey, I'm just annoyed for the fact that they told us what we already knew. I mean, we already uh, we can safely assume that every generation of console from Nintendo is going to have a 3D Mario game, is going to have a Mario Kart, and it's going to have a Zelda. I mean, these yeah. are these are games that have never skipped a single generation at all. Well, I mean, Iwata himself said that there's been at least been one game released for, for every system. Well... Yeah, and then they changed that with the Wii U, I mean with the Wii, where they had two Galaxy games. Which doesn't bother me with Galaxy, but I think they should do something else. You know, stop putting Mario in space. Let's try something new. I say they should try time travel. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see about that. Mario Galaxy, uh, no, it'll be a Super, uh, Super Mario um, Universe. There you yeah. go. And he has a well, time traveling Mario DeLorean. Was, or Super Mario Space Time. Space Time. Huh, there you go. We'll try that. All right, so that's it uh, for Nintendo Direct. I mean, as I say, look. There was some other stuff announced as well. Um, we got an early look at Bayonetta 2, which looks. No. What? All they showed off was her walking. They didn't show off, like, any gameplay. But they showed them working on it. Yeah, so all they showed you were 3D wireframes. It's an early look. It's not... Whatever. They also announced uh, a possible sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles. Yes, I remember that. looks awesome. Okay. It looks really good. I loved Xenoblade Chronicles, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, So, yeah. Oh, yeah, and just as a little thing about that whole... uh, the, The... the virtual console trial yes it was also announced what japan's getting there's two games that japan's getting that we're not getting okay instead of of, uh, getting f-zero and uh punch out featuring mr dream they're going to be in february they're getting the first fire emblem for the nes the famicom Uh and for the first time ever really uh ever for the first time digitally they're getting mother too which was also known as Earthbound in the U.S. So they're getting better games than us. Somewhat. I mean, 
it's going to be the first time they're getting it. So uh, as a digital release. Huh. So. So uh, yeah. Um, anything else about the Nintendo Direct? Nope. Uh, there was announced. They announced a new Wii Party. New trailer for Woo. Wonderful World One. Oh, and Shimagami, Shimagami Tensei versus Fire Emblem. Fuck yeah. Yeah, uh, not interested. Oh, Yoshi's Epic Yarn. Yeah, that one, um, even my girlfriend was, like, excited about. It's literally a Kirby's e- Epic Yarn with Yoshi in it. Which is, like, wow. <laughs> they re- you know, they may actually made a very good point. There hasn't been a uh, platformer specifically starring Yoshi since Yoshi's Story. Huh. Or, no, wait, there was Yoshi's Island, too. Which was on the DS. So. Yeah. And of course, Smash Brothers was. They said that we're not going to gang the first screens until E3, so. Huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. The Nintendo uh, Direct. What did you think of it? As I already said, eh. <laughs> was not really. I mean, there were some it, aspects that I liked, but for the most part, I was just more annoyed than anything. Actually, what. Uh, it kind of also proves my point that no matter what Nintendo does, they're still gamers are still going to be pissed off at them. So. I'm just saying, if you're not going to show off it, I mean, look, am I the only one who believes this? If you're going to announce something, show something off. That's all I'm saying. I, I it was just well, like you're I sitting. Said before, it, it felt like sitting through I, a press conference where all they're doing is yapping and yapping and yapping John, and yapping and not really getting to any point. John, it's hype the whole point is to get you yes excited but it was boring eating. as shit to watch oh boy okay moving on to sony's comment on new console yes now kaz Harai is being a snobby prissy little bitch whoa whoa watch the fucking language yes yeah no i agree with you yeah um he announced the, they they he said in an interview with who was it? Um, I I don't remember who. Well, anyway, he said in an interview that they're right now looking at they're waiting for Microsoft's first move. Yeah, pretty much Thanks. they want to pull what they did last gen, which worked out very well for them. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it it really worked out for them. So regarding. Regarding the the comments that people gave me saying, Kazurai wasn't the reason why the department sucked ass. You know, he was made to say this shit. Kazurai is now the president of the fucking corporation of Sony, and he's still making boneheaded mistakes. Yep. He really launched the Vita excellently. He is just so fantastic. Oh, yes, it's had such a great uh, one-year... Track record. He is fucking retarded. Oh, yes, it sold a shit ton in its first year. I mean, it is dominating the handheld market right now. It's it's dominating the the 3DS and it's dominating the iPhone. I mean, oh yeah, it's oh Jesus Christ! This guy's an idiot. He is and now he's running the whole corporation. Yeah, it's it's fucked up. Yep. Oh, I'm buying Balloon Fight, by the way. Oh, I bought it already. Oh yeah, you want a cookie? It's it's cool playing it on the gamepad with you know something else on the TV. You can so, multitask, watch videos of games while playing games. As I said, it, it's not really a selling point to me. For you, it's not a selling point, but for some others, it is. Huh. So, uh, yeah. Is there anything else? Um, that's about it. I mean, we could discuss some uh, future games that are coming out. Yeah, um, well, there's Dead Space 3. Yep, you know. which is coming out on February 5th. Um, yes, yeah, so that's not next week. It's the following week. Uh, it's going to be on a Tuesday, as well as Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time, I believe it is. Yep. Yeah. Wait, is it really coming out that uh, this next month? What, the Sly Cooper? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I didn't realize it was that close. 
Yeah, they're coming out on the same day. Huh. Okay, cool. Yep, so February's starting off on a good foot. Um, we'll discuss future other games. Um, I mean, for instance, we can also discuss what games we've been playing lately. Yeah, um, well, recently I, uh, actually last night, I officially beat The Walking Dead. Yep, how was it? And, wow. Uh, um, how do I say, like, I guys, this is my pick for the game of the year. Definitely. Like, now I'm like, I, uh, I'm very comfortable with my decision. At first I was like, eh, was it really the game, best game of the year? Yeah, it was. Huh. Holy shit. <laughs> That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, if you haven't played Walking Dead yet, definitely play it. It's it's really amazing, and it shows what how gaming can really, you know... It shows that gaming is a, is a storytelling art form. Huh. And it is. And, and, you know, that you... And it shows, like, how the interactivity of a video game can be in some cases even better than film in my opinion that's good because it's engaging exactly um and like i said in the last episode every you know every decision you make has a consequence in that game so basically you you have at several times during the game you actually have to make all these tough uh, decisions on whether who to save over another person. Huh. Yeah. And at the end of every episode, it actually tells you the percentage of of you and other people who went with the same decision as you did. Huh. So, yeah, it's very fascinating. And it makes you want to replay it just to see what would happen if you had made uh, another decision. So... Definitely, definitely check it out. Um, there's a whole bunch of other games I that came out this year that I really want to play. One of them being Journey. I haven't played Journey yet, and I heard that was really good. So, John, how about you? Any uh, games you've been playing recently? Um, I I've been playing more of the Dark Cloud Two. I I I just haven't had much time. I've been uh you know recovering from the flu. And, and stuff like that. Uh, you and I have been just kicked on, um, was it, uh, the Black Ops, yeah, 2? Black Ops 2, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, level, th- I'm at level 51, le- level 1 prestige. That's good. Uh, actually, you and I should play tonight and, uh, get it so you and I are both on the next level of prestige. Yeah. We're such gramers, guys, you know? I mean, you're only cool if you play Call of Duty. Oh, yeah. Oh my god, um, yeah. So I, I mean, I'm just waiting for another. Oh. You know, I'm, the next big game I'm going to be playing on my Wii U will probably be uh, what do you call it? Uh, Pikmin Three. I'm looking forward to that game. You know, it's such a tease when you see some video of it and you're like, yeah. I can't wait to play That's this. Yeah, in uh, March, I think. Yep. Or right, I think I, I think yeah, as they said, early spring. So I, I don't know exactly what the date is, but. Um, currently, also the current, currently the uh, the major game I'm playing right now is Dark Siders, and like I said before, I'm really liking it. So that's good. Yeah. Um, also, I thought this would be interesting to talk about. I got my first 32x game. Yay! That's right. I took you to Digital Press, which was awesome. Um, yeah, I picked up Star Wars Arcade for the 32X, and I gotta say, I'm actually shockingly uh, impressed by it. In what way? Well, mainly because the frame rate's actually really good. It's, I would say, probably 30 frames a second, probably 60. You compare that to something like uh, Star Fox and Super Nintendo, which runs, I would say, under 24 frames. <laughs> yeah, that was so. very, like, shitty. Yeah, but Star Wars Arcade actually kind of shows how powerful this system actually is, and I'm actually looking forward to getting more 32X games. Um, specifically, I want to get Virtua Fighter and Virtua Racing and Doom. Cool. So, um, 
Yeah, and I also got, for the Atari 2600, I got Warlords, which is friggin' awesome. I actually had, I had the Atari Flashback, which came out, uh, rad, say around nine, eight years ago. Okay. I got that for Christmas at around that time, and that included the game, Warlords, and that's how I got into it and started playing it. And at Digital Press, they had a copy for 99 cents, so I thought, why not? <laughs> so. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really cool stuff. That's good. Um, I'm oh, gonna... and I finally got a Pro Controller, as you know. Oh, yeah, of course. I got the Wii U Pro Controller, which I got to say, if you're going to get a Wii U and Black Ops 2, it's you, you, got, you have to get the Pro Controller. Definitely. Because it... To me, I think Nintendo's officially perfected the dual analog controller. Yeah, it's good. It's it definitely is. good. Um, it feels a lot more comfortable than, say, the 360 or the PS3 controller, which 360 is It's all right when you're playing like a PC game, like a PC action game or something like that, but uh -huh. when you're playing a first-person shooter, it's very awkward. I, I don't I personally don't mind playing first person shooters on a three sixty controller, but what I will say that the Wii U controller has over the competition, the battery life is excellent. I've I've only oh. had to recharge it twice since I've gotten the thing. And I'm already a prestige uh, going on prestige level two on Black Ops. It's yeah, the only it's... game that I use the controller for. So I mean it's definitely a very, very good battery life on that thing. And extremely comfortable. The PlayStation so. Three, I would have to charge it on a weekly basis. Yeah, this I actually haven't been able to. I have actually haven't charged this yet. You've had it for a week now. Yeah, <laughs> and it was halfway charged when you bought it. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Nintendo did very well in the battery life on it. Just too bad they couldn't put that battery life in the the main controller. Yeah, I'm hoping that like they'll. Well, I mean, I know that there are third-party uh, battery packs to get, but you shouldn't have to have a third-party uh, battery pack in order to play your game. That's true. So. All right, well, that, that about so, wraps up things. I mean, unless yeah, there's... Yeah, this episode's gone way too long. <laughs> no, it's not too bad. It's actually better than last week's. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, definitely subscribe, guys, if you have not yet already. Yeah. Um, you know, what we're really trying to do here with the show is get it on a weekly schedule, which yeah. we've committed to for three weeks now, which is good. Yep. Uh, let's keep the momentum going. Um, you know, if there's anyone who wants to be on the show, definitely drop me a personal message. I definitely read every, every single message that's sent to me. Um, and we could definitely work something out to get you guys on the show. So take care, guys. Look out for future episodes. And yeah, take care. Have a nice day.